Welcome. This screencast is going to take a closer look at the idea of matter. And specifically, I'm going to try and define for you or distinguish for you the difference between the two main categories of matter called substances and mixtures. And this little flowchart here is a nice summary of it, but it probably doesn't make a lot of sense at this point. So let's take a closer look at first substances and then at mixtures. Substance, mixture, what's the big deal? Is there really a difference? To most people, probably not. But to a chemist, yes, there is a big difference. And it really does matter if you're dealing with a mixture or a substance or a combination of both. So what is the difference? Substances have what we call a definite or a defined composition. In other words, we can write a formula for any substance out there. Like water. Water, most people know the formula for water is H2O. That means water always has two hydrogen chemically bonded to one oxygen. Not three hydrogen, not one hydrogen, not two oxygen, but two hydrogen, one oxygen. H2O is water. That's a substance, a definite composition, always the same. Mixtures don't have a definite composition like salt water. It could be a little salty, it could be a lot salty. In fact, even the term salt has a lot of different definitions. So a substance, because it's got a definite composition, it's chemically combined with the other things in it, it can only be separated by a chemical change if it can be separated at all. Mixtures, though, you can separate them physically, like using a coffee filter to keep the coffee grounds, out of the coffee you want to drink, or sorting out a jar of, jar of coins into pennies, dimes, nickels, etc. Those are just mixtures. So if you looked up the definition for a substance, the most common definition says it's matter with a uniform and unchanging chemical composition. That means a substance cannot be separated physically, like by filtering it, or distilling it, or evaporating it. It's also known um, as a pure substance, which that's actually redundant because the very word substance means it's pure. It's got the same composition all the time. There are, however, two different kinds of substances around us. There are things called elements, and things call, called compounds. And you've likely heard of both of these somewhere before in an earlier science class. We know of 92 natural elements on planet Earth. That means somewhere in, our, um, in the Earth itself, in the water bodies around us, in the, its atmosphere, somewhere we can locate 92 different elements or different kinds of atoms. Scientists have also been able to make about 30 or so different synthetic elements, and most of these elements are fairly short-lived and really not very useful or very important to us in our study of chemistry. So our focus will be on the 92 natural ones, which you have probably seen often represented or organized on a periodic table. Compounds are a little bit different. They're a combination of two or more kinds of atoms. And there are millions of possibilities. If you think about the 10 digits on a phone, yeah, there's 10 because you go from 0 to 9. If you think of all the different ways you can combine those 10 digits into even 7-digit phone numbers, or you add on the area code and make it a 10-digit phone number, think about 92 different possibilities that you can combine. And you can combine them as small as just two different to several dozen different kinds of atoms in there. So there are literally millions of different compounds out there, and we constantly are developing new compounds each year, which we see as new products. These new products can be new pharmaceuticals. They can be smaller um, components for in our computers. They can be new fabrics. The possibilities are limitless, and that's what chemists do, is come up with these unimaginable possibilities to most of us to make new products, to make our living even that much more convenient. So some examples, some simple examples of substances would be table salt, NaCl, or water, H2O. These are both compounds because they have more than one kind of element in them. If you just had oxygen gas or hydrogen gas, 
Those would also be elements or examples of uh, substances. A non-example is salt water. And the fact that we don't have a formula to write for salt water is a hint that it is not a substance. So what's a mixture? If you Google it or look in your chemistry book, it'll likely be defined as something like a combination of two or more pure substances in which each pure substance retains its individual chemical properties. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Not really. But a mixture is just what it sounds like. It's things mixed together. It's two or more things just physically mixed together. And these two or more things could be elements or compounds, but two or more substances just physically mixed together with no chemical reaction going on. So when you put salt in water, it tastes like salty water because the salt retains its property, the water retains its properties. However, when we have a chemical reaction, between two elements and we create a new compound, then the individual chemical properties are totally changed. So mixtures can be separated by physical means like filtering or distilling because they're only physically combined. So you can physically take them apart. And just like substances, there's two different big categories or kinds of mixtures around us. There are what are known as homogeneous or homogeneous, which means the same throughout and they're also called solutions. And then there's heterogeneous, which aren't the same throughout and can be either a colloid or a suspension. So some common examples of mixtures in your everyday life would be salt water, soda, steel alloys, or any other metal alloy out there, which is just a mixture of metals um, that we use in a lot of industry. So to sum up, I'm going to go back to the flow chart I started with. And you can see that matter can all be divided into one of two big categories. It's either a substance that we can write a, a chemical equation for, a chemical formula for, or it's a mixture that we can't write just a set chemical formula for. So it's a substance with a definite and defined composition or a mixture with an undefined composition. It's a substance that we can't physically separate, but instead we'd have to chemically separate or it's a mixture that can be physically separated. Sometimes not easily, but still possible. And that is the difference between mixtures and substances.